everyone. My name is Kerjane and I'll be your host for tonight's Tauke Talks. So Tauke Talks is a series of sharing sessions where every Wednesday we invite a local small business owner, a Tauke, to come and share about their motivation as to why they started their business and also the story behind their journey. And this sharing session is brought to you by RISE, a Malaysian research and social outreach project that empowers Malaysian youth through entrepreneurship. And RISE is proudly supported by City Foundation. So we believe, at RISE, we believe that entrepreneurship is not just limited to the bigger companies that use very advanced technology, but also to the small businesses um, such as Paper Rico um, that are still persevering uh, their dreams uh, despite the whole pandemic situation. And we just really want to use this platform to celebrate these small local businesses. And um, we are really happy to welcome our guests for tonight. Um, Howie, the co-founder of Paper Rico. Hi, Howie. Hello. Hi, Jane. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, Howie, I'm just going to pass um, the floor to you. And maybe can you tell us a little bit more about your business, Paper Rico? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you. And uh, Paper Rico is a local premium stationery focusing on customizable notebooks. Uh, you might have seen us on, on Instagram, Facebook, or maybe on our website as well. Um, we are four students. We are, we were found, <laughs> Paper Eagle was founded by four students, and we're all based in KL right now. Uh, our best-selling product at the moment is our Paper Eagle One. Uh, it's a customizable notebook with a whole array of customization features. You can um, hot stamp your own name. You can choose your own style of paper out of uh, the four choices we have. And you can even um, put in value-added templates such as um, one, five, ten year goals, habit trackers, and um, maybe some uh, different different uh, templates as well. So yeah, and then um, what's more interesting is we have 195 color cast, uh, color combinations, and that includes army green, uh, rose gold, the very popular rose gold, and yeah, I guess that's about it. We are a local customizable stationary brand. All right. Thank you so much, Howie. So if anyone wants to find out uh, more about Paper Rico and want to check out their products, you can feel free to go to their Instagram, their Facebook, and also their website um, if you're looking for a customizable stationery. All right. So um, thanks so much for telling us Telling us a little bit about your business. Now, Howie, we really want to um, hear your journey as well as an entrepreneur. Um, and it's really interesting. I'm really excited to have you here because you mentioned that you are, uh, Paper Rico was started by four students, including yourself. Um, so yeah, so my question now is, what inspired you to start your own business? Okay, so um, if you want to go to the very start of this journey, um, you have to go back to 2017. So I was right out of uh, Form 6. I did my STPM. I had a lot of time to spare. And then uh, I decided to learn one thing, that is sewing. So uh, my mom sews a lot, and then she has a sewing machine as well. So <laughs> that's what I picked up during my free time. Uh, you might ask why. Uh, that's because I've always been interested in um, skills that can help me create new things, create uh, maybe T-shirts or maybe... Um, bags, notebook covers, and all that. So yeah, that's why I picked up sewing. And then um, through this little skill, I managed to, I was able to sew um, power bank pouches, and maybe uh, sometimes I would sew laptop covers for my friends for their birthdays, for Christmas, and all that. And uh, I think my most, um, the proudest invention that I have was this uh, notebook that I sewed uh, with with pages folded with each other and all that. Yeah, so basically I sold a notebook and I gave it to a friend for Christmas. And uh, all of the other friends that were around, it, it was a like secret Santa thing. And all of the other, all of the other friends, they were quite impressed with um, that creation, a, so, a hand-sewn hand -sewn notebook. So yeah, uh, I actually wanted to start the business at that time. But then I didn't have the time because I entered university and uh, the idea was kept in my in the back of my head for a really long time. And after that, fast forward to last year, it was the start of MCO. And uh, one of my friends and uh, right now co-founder, we were actually uh, talking about 
startup ideas, business ideas. And this came to our conversation. And yeah, as we talked, we actually shared the idea to another friend, which was, uh, he was really interested in customizable stationaries. So yeah, by piecing all of these uh, tiny little hobbies and interests together, we were able to start this brand called Papereco with the focus that we want to make uh, customizable stationaries as accessible as possible and to also uh, promote the artisan brand in Malaysia. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. I think it's, it's super interesting to hear that it all started from your interest in creating things and also learning how to sew. Um, and yeah, so I'm also just really curious, like in terms of more like starting a business, right? Were you always interested in starting a business? I would say yes. Uh, and I'm really fortunate that all of my co-founders have been quite entrepreneurial uh, throughout, uh, throughout my whole time of knowing them. So uh, we would be able to share ideas. We would be able to throw ideas at each other and discuss about how feasible they are or how bad these ideas are. So um, yes, I would say luckily, and I'm really grateful that all of us have been quite entrepreneurial and we've always wanted to start our own businesses. And uh, Paper Eagle uh, isn't my first business. Uh, the others have failed. Uh, and um, it's, I would say it's the one that has, uh, I have learned from it the most. And it has brought me through a really long journey of um, tiny little milestones and achievements and also a whole long learning process. Mm. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, and, and you mentioned that, you know, Paper Rico is not your first business, right? So um, kind of after going through, um, I guess, um, some previous businesses not working out, um, what made you feel like, okay, you know, maybe this is worth another shot. Um, maybe I should go ahead and start another business, Paper Rico. Yeah. Uh, I did not really uh, doubt that Paper Rico would have any um, would cause any failures or something uh, because our approach has been quite safe so far. We have, we didn't put in a huge amount of money. That's uh, the first thing. And then the other thing is we're starting small, we're all students, what could go wrong? So that's our mindset. We just wanted to start something and actually make really good use of this time. Uh, this was way back in 2020 at the start of the pandemic. So mm. yeah, we didn't really think much. We just went all in and uh, yeah, so far it has been a great journey. <laughs> yeah, great. So so glad to hear, um, you know, that you were really confident about this brand and also at the same time, you were kind of taking, making sure, you know, you start small first and then you kind of grow from there. Um, and I think that's great to hear. Um, so my next question is, I guess, you know, with starting a business, obviously it, it is challenging, especially at such a young age as well. And, you know, having to juggle, I, I guess, being a student. Um, so can you share with us, you know, some what, what, what were some of the challenges when you first started the business? Okay, uh, I'll start off with what you mentioned just now, that being a student is, people would assume that you're young and maybe mm -hmm. you have zero experience. So that is really uh, one of our most memorable setbacks we've had so far. Uh, Throughout the start of our business, when we were doing R&D, we had uh, just FYI, we had six months of uh, R&D before we launched our first product. So throughout that six months, we were uh, surveying around town. We were looking up online to our um, foreign, foreign suppliers and all that. And the largest, I think one challenge that we faced was people would assume that you are young uh, we are. We were young as students. We were young and we were inexperienced. So uh, most of them would say, they, they would say customizable stationaries are not that feasible. They are not that um, popular as well in Malaysia. People would just say, oh, if you want a notebook, just get one, maybe 555. <laughs> I need a notebook that would work. So yeah, uh, I think you have to take in account that uh, the older generation that have been uh, supplying all this uh, materials for stationaries they are they are not that into customization they want they want it fast they want it cheap they would understand that the market want it fast and cheap as well so um 
The our feedback was that oh, customizable stationaries, they are expensive and slow, so this wouldn't work. Uh, you might as well not waste our time, you and me. Uh, so yeah, that's one thing. And um, another thing is as well, uh, is also during the R&D process, we had a lot of uh, challenges in terms of MCO and then all the SOPs. And uh, a lot of our materials were sourced from overseas uh, partners as well. So shipping there was a problem. There, some, there were a lot of delays uh, leading up to our launch as well. So we delayed our launch for a few months as well, two or three months. So yeah, these are some of the challenges. Right, great. I, I think you brought up one challenge that I, I think a lot of young entrepreneurs can really resonate is that, you know, just the fact that you're young, sometimes people might think that you're inexperienced and may not, you know, agree with your business idea. Um, so for your experience, how did you and your co-founders kind of overcome that challenge? Uh, so far, uh, okay, so there were people that uh, were quite negative about our ideas, but then we never really cared about all of, all of those um, feedback. We continued searching, searching, sourcing for suppliers, and I think we were quite lucky as well to meet um, really supportive um, minorities, I would say. They're not, they're not um, that against our ideas, so they would say, oh, that's actually quite, um, it's quite a good idea, and then they were willing to collaborate with us and try out this, this sort of new type of business, yeah. So, and mm. I would say, no matter how weird or how um, niche your idea is, I would say that there are people out there that would, you will be able to find people to support it. Yeah. Mm. Right, great. Um, yeah, and uh, you also mentioned, you know, the challenge of starting a business during MCO period. So, um, you know, now we are still kind of in MCO, somewhat um how has your your business and you and your co-founders learned to kind of navigate uh through the very difficult changing in sops or maybe shipping challenges and things like that okay so um for this one right i would say that all of the sops and all of the different regulations that have been coming up over the past few weeks or over the past year it has um taught us that as an online store, we really need to focus on building our online presence the most because no matter what SOPs are out there and no matter how uh, the market shifts towards, uh, let's say, work from home and all that, you will be able to find your placement in the market. And then um, with your online presence that you have built, you'll be able to target the people that um, are looking for your products. So I would say no matter what SOPs that uh, have come out and will be coming out. Um, we will be able to uh, use shift, uh, sort of, sort of modify uh, our online presence to fit um, the market that we want to go to. Mm. Yeah. Right, great. Um, yeah. So, so um, just I think you kind of touched a little bit on this as well. So, you know, with the uncertainty caused by the pandemic still present. Um, Obviously, I think COVID will not go away anytime soon. Right. Um, yeah. So how are so aside from building your online presence, right? How are you and your co-founders planning to kind of grow uh paper Rico's brand uh moving forward from here? Yeah. Right. Um our main focus right now would be on digital marketing. It is a, a really new field for us where we're non-marketing students. Uh so I would say that um, right now our focus would be on digital marketing. It is to um, how to shout our brand out to the people out there, and actually, you we have the online presence, and then we want to bring it to a greater audience. So uh, I would say that our main focus right now will be digital marketing, and then um, hopefully that will be able to help us reach to more people. No matter how, uh, no matter what SOPs come out, no matter. <laughs> what the restrictions are yeah mm. yeah and I, I think I think one big thing that you emphasized on was 
the importance of digital marketing and building an online presence for your brand, especially in this time. Um, can you share a little bit about, you know, some of what are some of the strategies uh, that uh, you and your team have used for your digital marketing? Yeah. Um, I can share a bit about our more successful um, strategies online. One of them would be to observe the online trends that are that have been happening. Uh, for example, Valentine's Day or sort of the uh, like May 20, early. I'm not sure if you understand that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so through these kinds of online trends, we were able to um, promote our love edition, Paper Eco One Love Edition, uh, to target couples, to target um, people who want to impress their significant other. And also through um, purchasing from uh, that specific period, you'll be able to, uh, you'll be entitled to different um, values, uh, not values, I would say different uh, freebies, such as uh, there was one we had this rose bouquet, we gave free rose bouquets for um, people who are celebrating uh, this early thing. Yeah, so I would say if you, if you're able to observe the online trends that have been happening, and you're able to ride on the wave early, then uh, that would be a huge benefit. Mm. Mm. Right. I think that's a that's a really good tip, especially for a lot of young people who are running online businesses now. Um, like how to make use of the online trends to kind of at the same time boost your sales, uh, make sure people kind of keep on track with uh, your brand as well. Um, and yeah, and I think uh, just to kind of backtrack a little bit as well that you mentioned that you know all of you are not from a marketing background. And currently, it seems like your business, there is a big emphasis on digital marketing. So I think for a lot of youth that don't come from a certain background, I guess, business background or marketing background, sometimes there might be this fear um, that, you know, if I don't come up from a certain background, then maybe I cannot do certain things, right? So what, what kind of advice or tips would you give for, for youth out there who are facing that kind of doubt? Okay, uh, I would say a disclaimer is that I don't think there's any business owner out there that uh, knows everything about their business when they started. So we're all safe, we're all equal. And then uh, other than that, I would say one, one benefit that I have experienced in Paper Eco is that um, I have my teammates, that's one thing. And then all of my teammates, uh, they have been really eager to learn new things. So... Yeah, I guess that's two tips. Um, one, find, find good teammates, find um, really passionate teammates that are willing to learn. And then number two would be having the urge to learn yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Digital marketing, um, building your own website or customer service, all of, this, all of these skills, all of this knowledge will come as you um, progress forward with your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I guess the um, what you're saying is also the, you learn mostly on the job, right? When you're actually yeah. kind of running your business at the same time, you're just learning as you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I guess based on your experience, uh, picking up all these skills as you go, do you have any recommendations as well as to, you know, where can people go to to learn certain skills like digital marketing or anything that might be useful for their business as well? Okay, so um, uh, I would say the first thing is YouTube. I learned a lot about website building on YouTube. So I would say maybe 50% or 60% of the time you're scrolling tutorials on YouTube. You're like, okay, how to adjust image size. <laughs> and then um, through maybe three or two minutes of YouTube videos, uh, you'll be able to learn. Uh, that's one way. Another way um, would be online courses, some that are not placed on YouTube. I'm not talking about those that uh, require payment. I'm someone who believes that there's a lot of free courses out there. So I've never paid for an online course before. Uh, yeah, and then other than that, I believe Facebook, they have their own uh, digital marketing course that you can sign up for if you're a page or business owner. And everything is out there free for you. So you just have to know where to, um, you just have to know what to search for. I would say like mm. that, yeah. Mm. 
Great. Yeah. Like, um, I think really quickly, if I can sum up your tips, it will be like, number one, it's just really important for um, someone who wants to start a business to first and foremost, have the mindset of wanting to learn and willing to learn. And secondly, you know, we live in an age where resources are readily available. We have YouTube, you can search anything there, watch tutorials. <laughs> yeah, things like that. Whereas I suppose, you know, back then, if you want to build a website and you don't know how to, you might have to spend that extra money to hire someone to build a website for you. Um, right. Which, yeah, which I, I think um, I think what you have done and you and your co-founders have done is um, something that a lot of young people can learn, um, just being very proactive in, in learning. Yeah. Um, and um, right. So moving on to the next question. Um, so... I know that Paper Rico um, has been around um, only quite recently, so you only kind of really started this year. Um, but so far, what is your proudest achievement to date? Okay, so I would say my our proudest achievement would be uh, more like multiple achievements. It's because um, every time we were able to, every time we are able to give a gift to someone as like a middle person, someone who come and order from us. And then pass the gift to a loved one or a friend. Yeah, every time that we get feedback, uh, that um, they say, "Oh, what a memorable, what a memorable gift, what a meaningful gift." I think that would be our large, our most um, heartwarming experience, uh, because to to know that what you're doing uh, is changing people's um, not not to say lives, but their perception, their um, their point of view towards. Uh, gifts towards customizable gifts, customizable stationaries. I think uh, it makes us uh, feel happy. It, it makes us really happy uh, to know that we're making a change. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it, it seems like uh, what you and your co-founders uh, really take pride in is, you know, just the fact that when people receive the customizable uh, notebooks or stationery, like it just seems like it's personalized for them and that just adds so much more meaning, right? Yeah, um, that, that's really nice to, to hear that you are also enjoying what you're doing. Um, yeah, um, so my next question is, um, can you name one entrepreneur whom you really admire and explain how and uh, why they've inspired you? Okay, uh, this one is easy. I would say Elon Musk. But before before all the cryptocurrency drama, yeah, um, before before Bitcoin and all that, before his influence on Bitcoin and all that, um, I really, really, I was really inspired by him. Um, mainly his mindset, uh, his mindset towards technology, his mindset toward engineering and all that. Uh, I've seen videos of him and maybe his uh, employees They've said that Elon Musk is uh, someone that is willing to go to the ground level to learn from all the engineers or from all the technicians even. Um, it's not just when building cars or building batteries and all that. Uh, I would say that that urge to learn, that passion to learn new things, no matter how busy you are, no matter what challenge you're facing, uh, that, that really inspires me. So um, I would say one way or another, he... Um, his passion towards uh, chasing after knowledge. Yeah, that's something that lives in me, I would say. Mm. Mm. Yeah, great. I, I, I do see as well from the way you share about, you know, your, your um, the challenges that you face and also the strategies that you took. A lot of it is very, you know, mindset uh, centric like you know it's all about you wanting to learn and wanting to improve yourself and chase after knowledge right um, yeah so I think I think that's great and and the last question that I have for you which um, is is very relevant to our audience here today so if you know in our audience here today we have people who are maybe thinking of starting a business or you know not too sure. Um, so my question for you is, do you think young people should start a business and why? Okay, this is uh, a definite yes from me. A few reasons. One would be, if you're a student, you have so much less commitments compared to maybe your elders, your parents and all that. Uh, this is freedom that won't be around for long. And uh, number two would be, we are in an age where starting a business is as easy as posting products online, 
starting a, an Instagram channel, an uh, Instagram account and posting things that you want to sell, maybe uh, the things that you're baking right now. Uh, yeah, so it's really, really easy to start a business, even um, for very little amounts of money. And uh, number three would be that even if you fail, uh, which I, I, which even if you fail, uh, you'll be learning a lot. And then all of that experience, all of that knowledge, you can put it on your um, LinkedIn, your social media to build your own personal brand. Uh, not just your resume, not just your um, LinkedIn and all that, but as a person yourself, um, you're carrying all that experience, all that knowledge. And if you decide to go into the corporate world, you're bringing all that experience into uh, the team, your future team. Yeah. Mm. All right. Thank you so much for answering all of my questions. So now we're going to go into the Q&A session, which is where we will answer the audience questions. Right. So uh, let's see. So, okay. The first question that we have from someone is, how was the R&D process for you guys? Um, and what strategy did you guys use to validate there is a market for your product? Okay. So uh, the R&D yeah. right. yes. process was... Uh, long and tedious, but it will be able to uh, set your direction moving forward as a business because you'll be able to, um, what we did was we visited a lot of suppliers, paper suppliers and uh, book cover suppliers, cloth suppliers and all that. And we didn't even know there were so many types of paper or cloths and all of that. So yeah, we bought all of them and tried them uh, in our own homes. And yeah, we were able to uh, choose the ones that fit our needs. Mm. Right. Uh, were they local suppliers or um, overseas suppliers? Both. Uh, the ones that we were able, were, we were able to visit were local suppliers, mm. just around um, KL, some in Penang and all that. Uh, and then for overseas supplier, we have, uh, we have to order them to KL. So that took a long time as well. I see. Okay, great. Um, yeah, and I guess the second part of the question is, what strategy do you guys use to validate if there is a market for your product? Okay, so I would say the largest, the most obvious indication for us was that there were already homegrown brands that have been in this customizable stationary space. We weren't first to market, uh, but knowing what, studying their trends, studying their cultures and how their customers were reacting, we were able to um, find our niche and move forward with it. And so far, we were able to, uh, we've, we've noticed that this niche has a market. Yeah. Mm. Great. So basically, study your competitors and yeah, at the definitely. same time, find your niche. Yes. Okay, great. Um, the next question someone asked you is, can you give tips on how you all manage your pricing for customizable products? Okay. Uh, right at the start of this call, I, I mentioned that we want to make customizable stationaries um, accessible for people. So we had um, we already had sort of the price range that uh, we wanted to study our competitors, find their price range first, and then put it a few steps lower than them. So I think studying your competitors, uh, that would help you gauge where your price range would be. It's either you're more premium than them or you're around the same or maybe even lower. Yeah. Mm. Mm, great. So um, I guess, again, study your competitors and, yes. um, and, and see you know, what, kind of, what kind of market you're going for, right? Um, okay, great. Uh, so I think the next question is, um, as a young entrepreneur, which part of the journey do you personally enjoy the most? Uh, it's definitely learning, learning about so much, uh, learning so much about the stationary world. Like I said, just now the papers and all that. And uh, it's not, not just, not just um, all of these materials and products. We're also learning about websites, uh, how to speed up your website, how to put up um, more efficient ads and all that. Uh, it is a repeated process of problem solving and then you solving your problems and then uh, learning from that experience. Yeah. Right, right. 
Nice. Okay. Um, so I think the next question is, um, so what have you learned from your previous uh, failures in starting a business? And what is one of the biggest lessons that you've learned up until running your paper, uh, paper Rico business now? I would say one biggest uh, reason that I failed previously, and also uh, it became the largest, the biggest lesson for me is uh, finding your target customer. You can't just go out there and say, uh, I have this product I want to sell to the whole of Malaysia. That would never happen unless maybe you're selling toothpaste or something. But even toothpaste, they have a lot of different types, a lot of different varieties. Uh, so yeah, if you're able to find your niche, if you're able to find your target market, your customer base, uh, one trick that would help you uh, identify who you're selling to is to make a persona. Let's say um, paper equals customer. One single customer would be called uh, Sally. She likes stationaries. She likes having her name on her own notebooks. She likes having the choice to choose between uh, gold, gray, green, and all that. Um, so we were able to identify what are the features that we can bring to them. Mm, great. I, I think that's a that's a really good tip. I think um, a lot of times people think that starting a business is as simple as just putting something out. But, you know, a lot of time needs to be spent on um, understanding whether people actually are looking for your product, whether, you know, your market is actually ready for your product as well. Um, and I think that's a that's a really good tip. And also, you know, making a persona, I think that is a very, very helpful tip. Um, yeah, so um, that's all the questions we have for the Q&A. Let me just double check. Yes, that is all the questions we have for the Q&A. Um, thank you so much for answering my questions and also the audience questions. And everyone, that was Howie from Paper Rico sharing about his journey um, as a young entrepreneur. Um, so what I really learned from Howie today is that um, a big part of being an entrepreneur is having that mindset um, that, you know, you're willing to learn and that you're willing to go out and make the most out of the resources that you already have through the internet. So like be it going on YouTube, um, be it going on free courses. And the biggest part of it is also learning as you're running your business. And, you know, oftentimes we all think that we need to have everything ready before we actually start our business. Um, but the most learning part comes from running the business itself. And I think um, I really admire, you know, how you, your, your mindset as a really young person to be very proactive in, you know, making your ideas come to life and also at the same time putting in the effort to understand and empathize with the market as well. So um, yeah, so I, I really learned a lot from you today and I hope the audience had a great time as well learning from you. Um, and if everyone you are interested to check out um, Paper Rico and you're looking for a customizable uh, stationery, please do check out their social media handles on Instagram, Facebook, and their website as well. All right. So um, if you've enjoyed today's Talkie Talks and you like to um, come for another Talky Talk session. So we'll be um, hosting uh, Shasna from Totes and All. So if you're interested to sign up, please sign up via the bit.ly bit slash Tauke uh, Totes and All. All right. So next uh, Wednesday session is actually an afternoon session. So it's 3 p.m. Okay. So um, coming up uh, you is our... Um, up, uh, Currently, we are having this uh, competition, this creative competition called the Spirit of Malaysian Tauke. So the Spirit of Malaysian Tauke is actually inspired by our very own Tauke Talk series itself. Um, so this is a creative competition for Malaysian youth to have an avenue to be creative, um, to design a postcard um, for a Tauke. So if you are, you know, if you have watched um, today's Tauke Talks um, by Howie from Paper Rico and you're inspired and you like to design a postcard to encourage him um, and to, you know, send some encouragement to his business as well, um, you can join in uh, the competition and find out more about it via the bit.ly. So that's bit.ly slash TSOMT 2021. All right, we have a range of cash prizes and a lot of uh, great uh, prizes for you to, to win when you come into this competition. 
Okay, so uh, next up, uh, we are having this free webinar series called Rise With Us. So it's a series of workshops and webinars designed for you uh, to learn soft skills. So you're interested to pick up certain skills to help with uh, um, making yourself more employable or to help with your university or anything else or running a business. Um, there are over 10 topics for you to choose from. So topics related to communication skills, um, personal branding, um, and uh, management skills, marketing skills. So um, you can all you can go to the website as well, bit.ly slash rise with us to check out more uh, of what other um, uh, what what topics you can choose from. So um, if you are Malaysian and uh, you're Malaysian youth, you can come on to this workshop. Yep. So um, next, um, if you're interested to find out more about what's going on at RISE and uh, our upcoming Talkie Talks, please tune, please follow us on our social media. So our Facebook, our Instagram, and our YouTube as well. So if you'd like to re-watch uh, Paper Rico's uh, Talkie Talks and also our previous Talkie Talks, you can also go on to our social media. So thank you so much, Howie, for being with us tonight. Uh, really enjoyed talking to you. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, great. And thanks everyone for coming for another Talky Talks and we'll see you next week. All right, bye guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.